Hello and welcome everyone, you are watching the For the Greater Kill Team channel. Thank you for tuning in as we continue to look at the leaked data sheets of the new Indomitus Crusade box set. Today I am bringing you all available data sheets of the Indomitus Necrons. But before we do that, it would be awesome if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We are almost at 1700 subs, so your support would mean a lot. Thank you in advance. I have to say before we start that in my opinion the new Necrons look way better than the marine part of the box set. I like the visual update of the warriors and even the spider-like big boys which bear extreme similarity to the battle robot of the first Judge Dredd movie. But enough talk, let's get down to our first model which is the Overlord. I haven't played Necrons in 8th edition but I assume that the Overlord has its standard Overlord stat line. Movement of 5, 2 plus 2 plus, S5, T5, attack of 3, leadership 10, and a 3 up armor save. He is kitted out with the 120 inch Tachyon Arrow, a once per game projectile weapon with strength 12, AP minus 5, and D6 damage. And his glaive, which I believe is the standard glaive which gives him a strength plus 2, AP minus 3, and 2 damage. Ability-wise, he has the Living Metal ruling, which basically lets him heal up a wound at the start of every turn. Has a 4-up invul save, My Will Be Done, which has changed into an Aura ability, and the Relentless March. Next up are your basic bitch Necron Warriors, this time you get 20 in this box set. Standard warrior stat line, really nothing special here, except weapons wise, they have their old school Gauss Flare and a brand new weapon option, the Gauss Reaper, which has the immortal Gauss Blaster stats, S5, AP minus two, damage one. However, the range on this weapon is only 14 inches and of course it's a rapid fire one it goes without saying that they have the reanimation protocols and a nice buff to this ability is the their number is legion ruling which lets them reroll rolls of one for reanimation protocols our next unit is the canoptech reanimator this unit has a movement of eight inches weapon and ballistic skill of four plus Strength 5, Toughness 5, 6 wounds, Leadership 10, and a 3-up save. This model is equipped with 2 Atomizer Beams and Claws. The Atomizer Beam has a 12-inch range, is a Assault 3 weapon with Strength 6, AP-2, and Damage 1, and its melee weapon uses the strength of the model with AP-2 and Damage 1. It has the Living Metal rule and the nano scanner reanimation beam rule which basically means that in the command phase you can give a friendly dynasty unit plus one to the reanimation protocols until the start of your next command phase with this combo you can make it a possibility that your warriors will be reanimating on a four plus if you have a artifact or a relic on your warlord then this can go up to three plus Next up is a pimped up immortal, the Royal Warden. Movement of 5, 3 plus, 3 plus, S5, T5, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, LD10, and a 3 up save. He is carrying a relic Gauss Blaster with a range of 24 inches, with S5, AP minus 2, and damage 2. The model has the Living Metal ability and something called Adaptive Strategy which says that in the command phase you can select a unit within 9 inches of this model and that unit can fall back and shoot and charge until the end of the turn. That is pretty good. My personal favorite is up next, the war robot from Judge Dredd, the Scorpec Lord. He is a pretty fast model with a movement of 8, a 2 plus 2 plus, strength 6, T6, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, LD10 and 3 up save. He has 3 weapons. The Emnitic Annihilator with an 18 inch range, 
which is an assault 2d3 weapon with s6 ap minus one and d1 and blast characteristics he has flensing claws with s user ap minus one and d1 this will be good against hordes moreover when this model attacks with this weapon it doubles the hit rolls for every attack you make so basically you can attack eight times when you swing with the claws that is absolutely brutal also he has something called the hyperface harvester which gives him plus two to strength and has minus four ap and three damages unfortunately because it's a big ass cleaver the size of a space marine you must subtract one from the hit rolls when attacking with it he is of course made of living metal has a four plus symbol saying and is haywired for destruction which makes him reroll hit rolls of one and in addition he also has an aura ability called united in destruction which lets destroy cult models reroll wound rolls of one within a six inch bubble big surprise no surprise we have the canoptic scarab swarm your basic bitch cannon father with a movement of 10 four plus weapon skill with no shooting ability s3 t3 four wounds per swarm and four attacks ld10 and a six up armor save they have the feeder mandibles which is an s3 weapon with zero ap and damage one however if you roll natural sixes on the attacks you do not have to make a wound roll since their attacks will wound automatically Next, we have our murder buckets, the Crypto Thralls. Movement of 5, 4 plus 4 plus, strength and toughness of 5, 2 wounds, 3 attacks, LD 10, and 3 up saves. They have two weapons the Scouring Eye, which is a pistol 2 weapon with Gauss Blaster characteristics, and Sighted Limbs with strength user AP minus 1 and damage 1. They have a buttload of abilities, both living metal and reanimation protocols. Bound creation, which lets you include the thralls in a detachment for each cryptic unit without taking up slots in the detachment. Protector aura ability, which does not let a cryptic model be targeted with ranged weapons while within three inches of the thralls. Last but not least, they have Systematic Vigor, which buffs their weapon and ballistic skills to 3 plus and their number of attacks to 6 from 3 while within 6 inches of a friendly cryptac unit. These look amazing. Speaking of which, we have the Plasmancer. With a movement of 5, 3 plus, 3 plus, S4, T4, 4 wounds, 1 attack, LD10, and a 4 plus save. He has the Plasmic Lance with a melee and shooting profile. When shooting, the weapon will have an 18 inch range with Assault D characteristics with S7, AP-3 and 2 damage. When used in melee, it is Strength User, AP-3 and 2 damage. He is of course given the Living Metal rule the Harbinger of Destruction, which lets you dish out mortal wounds on a 4+, plus after rolling 3d6 dice. This ability has to target a unit within 18 inches at the end of the movement phase, given that the Plasmancer did not advance or fell back in that phase. Unfortunately, his aura ability is missing some info. The sticky note covers up vital parts of the description, but similarly to the Harbinger of Destruction ability, this also lets you inflict mortal wounds upon an enemy unit on natural sixes within a six inch bubble by rolling X number of the sixes. We are hopping over to the Scorpec Destroyers, who are the underlings of the aforementioned big ass Scorpec Lord. Two profiles can be seen here, Destroyers and a Plasma Sight. The Scorpex have a movement of 8 inches, 3 plus, 3 plus, S5, T5, 3 wounds, 3 attacks, LD10, and a 3 up armor save, while the Plasma Sight has 8 inch of movement, 4 plus, 4 plus, toughness of 4, S5, 1 wound, 1 attack, 
LD10 and a 4 plus save. Speaking of weapons, the Scorpex are equipped with Hyperphase Threshers, which are Strength User, AP-3, and Damage 2, and it gives them plus 1 to attack. One Scorpex can be kitted out with a Hyperphase Reap Blade, which is Strength plus 2, AP-4, and Damage 3, which is a scary-ass can opener. Plasmacite has a monomonocular probiotic, I can't even pronounce that, which is nothing to write home about, S user AP-1, and a single damage. The models reanimate, they are also hardwired for destruction, and they have the infused madness ability, which kinda acts like when you overcharge a plasma rifle. If you have a plasmacite in the unit at the start of the fight phase, it can inject the rest of the unit with tainted energy, quote-unquote. If it does, you need to roll a d6, and if you roll one, one score pack is destroyed immediately from the unit. However, on a 2+, plus until the end of the phase, the unit will get plus one to strength and attacks. In my opinion, this is a very cool mechanic and worth taking the risk, since you have reanimation protocols at the end of the day, so there's a chance that the destroyed Scorpex will come back anyway. That's about it, guys. Those are all the profiles that got leaked. Personally, I am very tempted to pick up the Necron part of the box, despite the fact that the Marine part is vastly superior, not to mention the additional stuff that's coming out. Chaplain on bikes, the missile bunker from StarCraft, the Tech Marine, and so on. I really don't know what is going to happen to Kill Team at this point, with combat patrol around the corner, but we shall see. Hopefully, some of the stuff mentioned here is going to trickle down to Kill Team. I am putting my hands together for the Scorpec Destroyers. They would be an awesome combat spec in Kill Team and could wipe the floor with everything, especially if you would bring them as the Novak sub faction. Before we finish today's video, I would like to introduce a new and small segment to the channel, which is the Hungarian 40k word of the day. So the Hungarian 40k word of the day is Lanskard, which is chainsword in English. Lanskard, chainsword. Thank you very much for watching and all hail the Silent King.